Fuck up, Dibbles. Jade all back to answer more quick goddamn questions. First one we got, paid question. But only one for the goddamn day, so unacceptable. Down by a minimum of one. And he's got some screenshots for me that I have to pull up on my computer, but he goes, starts it off like this, from Infinite Oddities and Antiques. So it doesn't really say his name. I guess it's his business, small business. Hobby, I don't know, something like that. That's what the uh, fucking set of the PayPal. So David fucking Vincent wants me to send him money for a piece of art I handmade because I used the Morbid Angel logo. My girl handmade the skull and I recreated all the artwork and made a cool piece for myself, my shelf. I tagged him in on it so he might check it out. I thought he might like it. Instead, he asked if I had permission to use his logo and will I be sending him money if I sell it. So fuck this guy. I'm going to send you the screenshots of how that conversation went. So he's built these goddamn screenshots. But yeah, I would, I would expect no, no less from goddamn Gay Dave. Uh, where's he at? Lee Graham is the guy's name. That's what it says on the fucking uh, email. Uh, so here's the screenshots. Comments. Official David Vincent. I do not recall you getting authorization and or permission to use the Morbid Angel logo. Will you be setting a portion of sales to us? Question mark. And then his user ID on whatever the fuck this outlet this is on. I'm not even sure. Uh, Suprema 666 IKK. He says back to David Vincent. No, however, I will be recouping my money I did give you for the Illu Divinum and Santa Salmon. <laughs> Definitely a good goddamn comeback. And then it looks like, I just see the images. It looks like that's all it was. D D Davy Boy didn't know what to say to that. Fucking cat had his crotch on that one. Um, yeah, that's cringe as fuck, dude. That, that, I mean, he, he's in the category of dumbass bolt thrower or anybody that bitches about bootlegs. Um, just a bunch of out of the loop fucking dumb fucks. Uh, that are just hurting for money and, and it, put it to you this way, dude. Like when we carried boots and shit, you think Iron Maiden ever fucking says anything? No. You think King Diamond and Merciful Fate never says anything? No. Why? Because those are somebody's. They're doing something. It's always the fucking zeros that are a penny pension to try to get something. And what's hilarious in this case, and a lot of times this is the case, it's always a member. What do you mean your logo, dude? That that Morbid Angel was around before. You're not an original member, Dave. You're not even on the first album, Abominations of Desolation. You're, you're, you're a late beat, brah, brah. What are you talking about? Then you left the band. Then when you came back, you put out the worst fucking death metal album in existence. You're not into death metal. You're into cowboy hats and dumb shits. He's a fucking guy. This guy's a goddamn disgrace. If anybody was to email you that, Grant, I don't think anybody should be acting like that, especially a one-off. I think it's bad enough when bands bitch about boots. It's like, dude, what do you expect when you're a legendary act? Yeah, your band's going to be bootlegged. Like, why would you even think that that would even be, like, in question? Like, why why are you surprised? Look at ACDC. Look at Maiden. Look at the Misfits. Look at Metallica. Kiss. All, all those bands have been fucking bootlegged. The Rolling Stones. All that shit has been bootlegged. Somebody's get bootlegged. Nobody's do not get bootlegged. Terrorizer Magazine said it years ago. Unless your band has been bootlegged, you have not done shit. I kind of agree as far as in popularity and you leaving your thumbprint on the scene. You're, you're kind of a overlooked, just nobody band. I'm sorry. That's the, that's just the fucking truth. Now, don't be wrong. I like a lot of those uh, nobody bands, but that is kind of, I see where they're coming from. So if your band's ever booted or anything like that, you should be fucking looking for the person because you want to give them a big fat hug, pat on the back. And just the, the biggest fucking thank you. You should be a kid on Christmas. Your band, according to Terrorizer Magazine, you officially fucking made it then. Because you're now a somebody band. So, but David, it's like him coming and bitching. It's one thing. It'd be bad enough that Trey hasn't got said anything. But he's the only guy that I would give somewhat of a say. If somebody's going to say something, it'd be Trey. Morbid Angel is Trey. It's not you, Dave. I mean, out of all the goddamn, the, the, the big four, which is not death in there, by the way. He's the big four of death metal. By default, of who sold the most records and stayed, were putting out death metal records, majority of the catalog, not two death metal albums. Cannibal Corpse, Deicide, Morbid Angel, that was the big three. And then I would say in recent times, Obituary got to add to it. Because goddamn, those hillbillies left too. We're back. They were gone for a big chunk of time after back, back from the uh, dead. So they wouldn't have been in there either. But now, and when they did come back and they were very successful, they're consistent where they, where they uh, picked up where they left off. It wasn't like anything completely stupid. 
I would say they enter the big four and as far as pop popularity wise, right? So in the big four, Morbid Angel put out the biggest goddamn fucking uh, disgrace of an album of, of bands putting out bad albums. And Dave left and he was doing side hustle, like very questionable, like, I don't know about you, dude, that everybody knows about. Wasn't on the early shit, so the Morbid Angel logo was already around before your dumbass was even thinking about being a fucking Morbid Angel. So if anybody gets that say, it's fucking Trey. It's not Davey boy. Get lost, brah, brah. <laughs> so I thought that was a good goddamn reply. Yeah, dude, tell that guy to fuck off, man. You know, you don't get no goddamn say. But what was that side project he does uh, with his wife or whatever? And it was just completely fucking deplorable. Ah, oh, what the fuck is it? Uh, you're probably all shot at this screen. Just, just, just go work on that, brah, brah. Fucking goddamn fucking disgrace. Uh, next goddamn in line. This is, uh, these are all, uh, ch channel fucking questions. Oh, no, the one, one order question. One order question, the rest of channel questions. Ernest Garcia. Uh, order question for you, J-Dog. You mentioned Onslaught, Power From Hell, once or twice on your channel that you were late to that album, Get In Death, what's your review on it? It pioneered both death and black metal. Dude, I I, I don't agree with that. I mean, it, it was at the early forefront. I mean, it's a good album, but it's like, um, albums coming out at that time, I, there was definitely better albums. Like, for example, I think the first two, for sure, Running Wild albums, I'd even put Under Jolly Roger in that category, too. So three albums by them destroy uh, power from hell, in my personal fucking opinion. Um, I mean, Brother to Kills way better, way better, and the Sign of Evil's way better. I mean, uh, Power from Hell is just a little bit of a darker thrash album, kind of. They just had a song, Death Metal. It's a good album. The, I mean, the hit, let's call it like it is, is Power from Hell. Power, power, power from hell. It, it's good. Uh, the rest of it's it, it, it's is a very pretty good goddamn classic metal album, is what I would say. Um, it, it, if I was to make top, top 10, 30 albums of all time, it's not in there for me. It definitely, it definitely uh, wouldn't make the goddamn cut. Uh, I own it. I own a CD. I own an LP. I think I even own a picture of this. So I go with three versions. Thought it was that goddamn good enough. Own, it's definitely a true shit. It's definitely, uh, <laughs> it's another one of those. Yeah. When you get these guys fucking reviewing dumb shit and talking about how goddamn metal are, they got a metal channel. I didn't need to mention the goddamn names again. I, I need to keep giving them shout outs. Um, when they're mentioning dumb crap, but yet yeah, they, they don't even own Power from Hell, don't know it. It's like, it goes to show how fucking limited their goddamn metal knowledge is. Now, I'm not going to go as far as saying some guys get carried away because they want to be stupid. It's usually the older, older guys. Well, they'll get like, no, dude, you got to go all the way back to the roots to the 60s, like where rock started. Because without that, there wouldn't be metal. I'm not talking about, if that's the case, go back down to the goddamn cavemen when they were banging on fucking rocks and shit. That's where music kind of started, dude. Ooga, ooga, ooga. And they're banging on shit. And if you're, you're going to go play that stupid ass fucking card, I'm talking about the actual genre when it was officially started, not what's spawning. I understand that people grew up listening to Beatles and Elvis, but you don't need to like that to be in the fucking metal. You know, technically don't need to like anything. But when you, when a, with an old classic of the genre of extreme metal, because this music is still new, it's still in its infancy. Again, we've already been over this. 53 years max, metal has been around. Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. Death metal has been around max fucking 38 years. Possess seven churches. Some people don't even consider that a death metal album. So if that's not, what is the first death metal album? According to Danny Nelson, it's fucking uh, Scream Bloody Gore. Okay, if that's the case and that's where death metal start, started, fuck all those stupid ass demos. He didn't say that, but he insinuated that's where death metal started in a conversation I had with him. 1987. Okay, well, if that's your belief, then death metal has only been around 36 years. So what I'm getting at, it's a new goddamn genre. So to not know a classic of classics, but you're bringing up dumb fucking devourment worshiping dumbass shit. It's like you, you're you, you scream newbie, and you, you you just you're not a student of the genre, and you're probably not very passionate about this shit either. You're probably a pretty you're you're a weekend warriors, which you are, bro. Right? You, 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 at best, you, maybe you buy physical format, and even that's extremely unlikely nowadays. You're you're a digital download guy. If that's you probably even fucking stream the shit on YouTube for free. And you're a go to show, buy a shirt, look cool in front of your buds guy. The bud, the buds aren't there, and you're driving your goddamn car. You're listening to goddamn Rover's Morning Glory on the radio, driving to your fucking nine to five job that you're completely miserable on. What do you put on while you're having your goddamn vape smoke and your uh, Starbucks coffee? 
Window down, all miserable, getting ready to go to the construction site. Oh, shit, 6 a.m., fucking playing Rover's Morning Glory or the stupid-ass fucking buzzer uh, classic rock stations. They're playing. But when the buds are around, Saturday night, Friday night, partying, get ready to go to the show. Let's get fucked up, bro. Smoke a bomb. Do some hits of fucking acid, bro. Get those beers. It's pre-show beers. That's when they got the devourments, the internal bleeding odds. It'll look cool. Now, I'll be wrong. All genres are guilty of it. The black model guys, too. Same thing. What I'm getting at is a lot of fans, the weekend warriors. They'll play it when they're looking cool. Weekend warriors, in my opinion, is kind of a step up or a polite way or politically correct way of saying fucking poser, basically. So that, that they, the, those guys, yeah, of course they don't know power. Of course they don't know Gates of Purgatory. Of course they don't know Walls of Jericho. Of course they don't know Hellish Crossfire. That's those are some metal. Just there's certain metal albums you just know. Now you don't have to like anything because again, like I, I, I confess, there's there's metal staples masterpieces that I'm not a fan of. Wasn't a fan of fucking anything by Blast Me. Really, wasn't really a fan of anything by Voivod. I mean, War and Pain that is a staple. It absolutely is. But I heard it. I know it. I'm aware. I mean, I can't air guitar or anything, but I've heard it a few times because I try to get into it. So I'm like, ah, man. Maybe it's just not hit me first listen, so I listened to it a few times. So like War and Pain, Blood Upon the Altar, shit like that, Fallen Angel of Doom, I probably heard those albums at least five times. Not that that's a ton, but at the point, if I, the fifth time it's not hitting me, I'm like, all right, guess the dog just don't like it. No poser shit, I'm not going to pretend to like it. But I at least gave it a shot, made sure I'm educated, know what it is, not sitting there talking smack and saying stupid shit like <laughs> just complete dumb recommendations and don't even know what that is and haven't heard it. But if, we, if you're in that category, in my opinion, you shouldn't even have a goddamn YouTube channel on, on, the, on the subject. You just shouldn't. It. It's like a fucking 12-year-old trying to teach you how to be an auto mechanic. Why, why would you listen to him? Does this motherfucker even know how to pump gas? Well, he, he's learning. Mom's showing him how to pump gas, but he's got an auto mechanic channel. He knows nothing about the topic. That's that's the way I see it is if you don't know albums like Power From Hell. But do I think it's... Uh, a, a, what did he say? Uh, he kind of is overhyping a little bit. Uh, how do you word it? Getting to review. It pioneered both death and black metal. I mean, he pioneered as far as before it's yes and no. Because uh, what year is uh, Power From Hell? Is it 84 or 85? I think it's 85. Might even be 86, right? And then The Force. The Force is definitely a thrash album. No doubt about that. It's, uh, wasn't that 87? Could be a little bit wrong on the years, but for starters, it doesn't predate goddamn Bathory Bathory. And even if it fucking did, if it was a month or so before, which I'm almost positive now, most positive that album's 85, uh, Power from Hell, Bathory Bathory is 84. That is a full blown black metal album. And just whether, again, whether you like Bathory Bathory or you prefer Onslaught, now you can prefer Onslaught over Bathory. That's fine. If you're like, I definitely, I just jam that head to toe more. That makes, I get, makes sense. I get it. I personally prefer Bathory Bathory. But to say that's darker and evil than the first Bathory, Onslaught? No, it's not. Not not even close. Put it to you this way. Go put on one for fucking grandma who's never heard metal. What she finds scarier. Onslaught, who she's probably going to be singing along to and tapping her foot like, this is pretty good, Bobby. Or put on that first bathroom. She's going to be thinking, what is this fucking scary ass shit? Who are these these devil worshippers? Sodom and the sign of evil. That smokes it. That's way more evil, way more dark, way more sinister, way more grim than fucking uh, Power from Hell. Again, I'm not trying to take anything away from it, but I, I think you're giving a little bit, I guess, more credit than it is. I just think it's a it's a great, dirty, kind of death thrash album. It's a non-friendly fucking, it's a non-radio friendly, non-sellout, non-commercial thrash album. What's a radio friendly, not thrash album? Testament, Exodus, well, Bonded by Blood, I wouldn't say that is, but everything after Bonded by Blood, I mean, Fabulous disaster and shit, that's for sure. You can make the argument first two Exodus, maybe not so radio friendly. But I would say anything after Bottom by Blood, maybe not Puzzle of Flesh, but anything after that for sure. I mean, uh, Toxic Walls and shit, not that it's bad, uh, but that, that's radio friendly. That's, that, that, that you can take home for mom. That, that's that's mom safe fucking thrash. Testament, Megadeth, that, that's Wimp of Death. That, dude, that's, that's, that's commercial thrash all the way around. Again, I like some of it. I think the two thir- first two albums are good albums. Um, that I ain't superstitious bullshit could have got rid of that. That was a fucking turd. Um, that's, that's radio friendly thrash. I mean, for fuck's sakes, do I even need to bring up Craptalica? That's totally radio friendly uh, commercial thrash. So that's why I just think uh, Power from Hell was more underground, primitive, not radio friendly thrash. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not some people's favorite fucking genre. And fuck yeah, uh, it's 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 not my my favorite is death metal, but it's, I can totally see why that would be yours. It's a great one. That's for goddamn sure. Twink core free listeners for sure. You know damn that well. Not one of the motherfuckers at Suicide Silence shows at. Not one of those mofos owns fucking onslaught power from hell. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Fucking teed. Uh, bad or red? This is a uh, user ID. So channel questions for all you pussy boys complaining about the other ones, which makes no fucking sense whatsoever. It's exactly the same for you. Your listening pleasures are no goddamn different. Your listening experience, your viewing experience, exactly the fucking same. Shut the fuck up. The sound looks stupid. I have a p- p- poser confession to do. Oh, yeah? Mortician are boring and seven churches too. Ba bra bra. Boring means something else. You got the definition of boring wrong. I'm going to assume you're uh, from a different country and don't speak the language too well and got the definition of uh, boring wrong. You made th- you meant th- to say those, you meant to say mortician are bangers and seven churches are too. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. The word boring does not go next to the tish or does not go next to seven churches. Maybe those are too harsh for your badge. You prefer fucking motionless and white. I can understand that. A lot, of, a lot of wimps out there. Totally get it. That, that's some total tough music. Total total man music. Makes sense. But tish boring, possessed boring, word boring, that's not the definition of it. Means something else. You're confused, bro, bro. Go ask mama what it means. Uh, Reese Crop. Re- God, these fucking stupid ass user IDs. Reese Chown. That actually might be his name, but nonetheless, it's combined as one. Dog, are you planning on are you planning on hearing the new Berserker Legion record later this month? Don't even know what the fuck that is, and it doesn't sound interesting at all, so no, I am not. Trevo student. Sub J Dog, annual poser and resident degenerate. Love the content. I would love to hear your thoughts on the new horrendous album. I think it's great. Ah, these guys. Um well, first off, I haven't heard the new album. I haven't made made it past the last couple. It was uh, horrendous. I remember when they did that demo. Is that the Sweet Blasphemies? And then the the uh, first full length was that the Chills? I believe it was called. I remember liking that, being like, "Yeah, more is." Uh, it's been a while since I listened. To it. I'm pretty sure I picked both of those up on LP too. Liked the logo, liked the name. Uh, everything was fitting. You could tell, dude. There were another one of those bands that. Cause it's going about ten years ago when that came out, right? The Sweet Blasphemies. It's about ten years, give or take. You know, give or take a year. Um, that was right around the time where all these retro, early '90s uh, based death metal bands were coming up. The uh, the, the the two molds and, and, and all just all the whole maggot stop fucking crew, and then there was a bunch of other bands on Dark Descent. And I liked the whole idea. And Horrendous was one of the bands I checked out around that time. And uh, I, I, I quickly, as I, I thought it was cool, because I started seeing some guys, oh, man, it's cool. It's early 90s. It became within the within the first 12 months, it became all like, oh, this is just the new trend. It was obvious. Um, but Horrendous was one that I listened to and picked up before uh, I, I caught on to the trend. And I remember liking those. I remember being nothing special, though. I'm, I'm pretty sure it sounded pretty Swedish, if I'm if I can remember. That's how long ago. I mean, it would be a new listener when I listened. But I mean, I, I thought it was good enough to pick up a vinyl of that Sweet Blossomies. And the chills, I think they're both on Dark Descent. I know Horrendous was a initially a, eventually on Dark Descent, but I think they even started on them. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I think it was by the, it was either by the second album or the third. Wasn't there that Addictius or whatever? It, it, it's again, they pulled, it's like they're in that category like Blood Incantation. It's fine, but it's just, it's hippie death metal. You could just tell by the cover, they got rid of that logo. Um, it, it's just it's just hipster death metal. It's for it, it's death metal that it doesn't suck. It's smoke suicide silence, but it's like it's for that it's for these twenty year olds of today that think death is in the big four. It's for those guys that think death human is fucking great. Like fuck yeah, dude, human. That's what humans. But be- it's for anyone that thinks human is better than scream bloody gore. To be honest with you, I did not realize that phenomenon even existed until about six, seven years ago. And it was somebody that pointed it out to me. I didn't even know it was somebody else. Somebody brought it up. 
uh, because I think it was right around the time where Relapse just signed Death, like or bought the rights. It was around that time, or just after. Like I said, it's around six, seven years ago, give or take. And I'm like, oh, so yeah, that's gonna be putting out Leprosy and like uh, Scream Bloody Gore. I'm like, uh, and he's and the guys telling me, he's like, no, no, dude, they're doing their whole catalog. I'm like, really? I was like, who the hell's buying anything? I was like, maybe spiritual healing. I was like, who the hell else be fucking even listens to that other shit? He's like, what? He's like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, the kids of today, they don't even listen to the demos. They don't even listen to Scream Bloody Gore. He's like, they're like humans where it's at. I'm like, what? I was like, who's saying that? I was like, I've never met that person in my life. He's like, oh, dude, it's just dumbass kids. 16, 18, 19, you know, just total fucking... Kiddos living in their ba- mama's basement that don't 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 know shit. I was like, they gotta be. I've never heard anybody tell me humans great and scream bloody gore is mid or sucks or or even just humans better than scream bloody gore. That is irrelevant opinion. <laughs> Tape on that fucking mouth shut. Get lost, Rob. Rob. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That's 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 what the later horrendous reminds me of. It's fine. You put it on like you put on fucking death, human or symbolic. I don't think it sucks. I don't shut it off. But I'm not like I'm not like I'm putting that on over fucking Outward to Golgotha or like an ever flowing stream or cross the sticks. Real death metal like the the, the good, good shit. The, 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 fuck yeah, the man shit. It's like, okay, if it's there, we got nothing else. Yeah, I'm going to put on fucking this, these later downgrade as a motherfucker death albums and this downgrade as a motherfucker hippie as hell horrendous album on over before stupid ass Rover's Morning Glory, like the, like the last fucking poser we're just talking about. Sure, I'll listen to that to break the silence. But if I got the goddamn Tish in one hand or the new horrendous in another, which do you think I'm fucking putting on? I'm going with the Tish, brah, brah. Come squish the surge, you know what I'm gonna do. Put a couple of podcasts in the morning. Later, goddammit.